We begin with that attack on Salman Rushdie. The author remains in hospital at this hour after he was stabbed on stage at a literary festival in western New York. A male suspect has been charged with second-degree attempted murder. CBC's Neil Herland is tracking the story for us. So, Neil, what more can you tell us about these charges? Well, Travis, the man accused of the attack against Salman Rushdie is now charged with attempted murder. The Chautauqua County District Attorney Jason Schmidt releasing a statement. It says Hadi Matar has now been formally charged with attempted murder in the second degree and assault in the second degree. He was arraigned on these charges last night and remanded without bail. Matar is 24 years old and from Fairview, New Jersey. His home is now being searched by the FBI. Investigators are trying to learn more about the accused. The writer Salman Rushdie was attacked at an event in Chautauqua, New York on Friday. That's a village with only about 4,000 people. It's a 90-minute drive south of Buffalo and it's home to a summer festival that features writers, lectures, and music. Rushdie was airlifted to a hospital in Erie, Pennsylvania. That's right across the water from Port Dover, Ontario. And he was taken there because it's a lot closer than Buffalo. We're talking half an hour closer. Now we're waiting for an update today on Rushdie's condition. But last night, his agent, Andrew Wiley, said that the news is not good. Rushdie underwent surgery. He's now on a ventilator. He can't speak, and he will probably lose an eye. He was stabbed in the liver and the nerves in his arm were severed. We're also told that his liver was damaged. Travis. And Neil, take us through some of the reaction that is continuing to pour in. Yeah, so Salman Rushdie is a famous novelist. In 1988, he wrote a book called The Satanic Verses, which some Muslims consider blasphemous. The former Ayatollah of Iran issued a fatwa or a religious edict calling on Muslims to kill Rushdie. And after yesterday's attack, reaction is pouring in from around the world. And we want to share some of the statements. First, Susan Nossel, she's head of the free expression group PEN America. Let's bring up her statement. She says, Salman Rushdie has been targeted for his words for decades but has never flinched nor faltered. He has devoted tireless energy to assisting others who are vulnerable and menaced. We're also hearing from another group, the Humanists of the UK. Salman Rushdie is a patron of that organization. Let's have a listen. The enemies of free expression and free thought and of free choice, and especially those enemies of those good things who would resort to violence in opposing them, are tremendously empowered now by the state of the world. You know, religious extremism, totalitarianism, ethnic nationalism. It's so easy now. All so many people are on a hair trigger um, and have become convinced that violence um, and you know division, hostility, is the way to achieve their end. And we're also hearing from the Canadian writer and former politician Michael Ignatieff. He's tweeting about his friendship with Salman Rushdie. He says, I was there when he went into hiding in 1989 and used to see him during his confinement. Now I pray he survives and lives to defy his tormentors once again. And finally, Alberta Senator Paula Simons is also reacting by revealing that she has also been the target of a death threat in the past. She says it's now important to take them seriously. Travis. Okay, Neil, thank you for this. For more on the Iranian angle, let's head to Nader Hashemi. He is the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver, and he joins us now from Toronto. So let's first off begin with your reaction. What went through your head when you saw that video and when you heard about this attack? Well, it was quite shocking and horrific, both because of the you know, violence and the injuries that Salman Rushdie has sustained, but also because this really came out of nowhere. I think the last thing on anyone's mind, probably including Salman Rushdie's mind, was, you know, the threat to violence against him. It was a general view that, you know, the, the death threat that the Iranian government had issued against him over 30 years ago was very much a thing of the past, not of our current moment. When was the last time the Iranian government made a public statement about Rushdie? Well, it happens quite frequently. You know, um, the hardline um, uh, ruling establishment in Iran frequently says quite openly and quite proudly that the, the bounty on his head remains, that um, Salman Rushdie deserves to die. Uh, but when this issue first surfaced over 30 years ago, it became an international crisis for the Islamic Republic of Iran. So they gave these pledges to the European Union that they would not actively seek to assassinate Salman Rushdie uh, for reasons of their own national interest, because they were suffering economically and politically, but internally for reasons of domestic propaganda. Hardliners in the regime still claim to invoke 
uh, the death sentence uh, for reasons of you know Islamic authenticity, of course, a very warped interpretation of Islam. So these things still you know take place, but the general view among uh, analysts of Iran is that Iran is not actively seeking you know uh, Salman Rushdie. Uh, that's a thing of the past. I think the Islamic Republic of Iran is still guilty here for incitement by virtue of its ongoing, you know, public statements um, by elements within the regime who still call for his death. Nader, I wonder if you could kind of give us the history of the fatwa against Rushdie for those who may not be familiar with how it all started. Well, the book, um, you know, the Satanic Verses were published in 1988, and this. Uh, um, generated this sort of small scattered protests among various Muslim communities, primarily in England, where the book first appeared, but also in India. And then um, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, um, you know, issued this uh, infamous fatwa saying that um, Salman Rushdie had committed an act of blasphemy and that it was incumbent on, you know, Muslims to carry out uh, a death sentence against him. And then that this you know, sparked a global international crisis, particularly for Iran. Um, there were a series of um, translators and uh, other people involved in the promotion of the book who also faced uh, death threats. Some of them lost their lives. And so it was a big issue in the 1990s. It's gradually withered away when Iran sort of, um, you know, gave these assurances to the European Union that, you know, it wouldn't actively seek to kill Rushdie. But Rushdie, you know, had to go into hiding uh, for many years. But gradually, I think after the first decade uh, after the fatwa, his security started to relax and he started to appear in public uh, much more frequently. Uh, I saw him speak in Denver in 2015. There was very little security there. Right. And the general view was that this was over. And this was not the first attempt on his life, correct? Correct. There has been, you know, right from the time of the fatwa, you know, people had been apprehended um, um, in England and other parts of the world um, uh, with uh, solid evidence that they were trying to assassinate him. So he was, you know, his life was very much in threat, uh, under threat. But that, um, you know, we're talking about an event that happened over 30 years ago. And, and so that's what's so shocking about this event. It seems like it, you know, was totally unexpected. And the evidence seems to suggest, you know, a young radicalized person online with sympathy to the policies of Shia extremism and the Islamic Republic of Iran, you know, carried this act out with no direct link to the, you know, policies of the Islamic Republic of Iran. But still, I would argue that, you know, because of the ongoing internal promotion of the death sentence against Salman Rushdie within elements of the Iranian regime, they do bear some responsibility here for incitement to violence. Appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Nader, uh, uh, Nader Hashmi joining us from Toronto.